What is causing this 25-year-old patient's chronic headaches? In yesterday's case study, I presented the case of a 25-year-old female who presented to my office with years of headaches that's been slowly getting worse. Her headaches are mainly in the back part of her head and are worse when she bears down like having a bowel movement or when she coughs or sneezes. She's also began to lose the sensation of her hands and she's actually burned her hands when washing the dishes in hot water and didn't even know that she did it. Let's talk about what we see on this MRI that I showed you guys. First off, we see this large syrinx, which is basically a cyst within the natural spinal cord. The spinal cord should look like this area down here where you see this thin gray material, but in here you see this backup of fluid, and that's called a syrinx or syringomyelia. And this syrinx is why she's losing the sensation of her hands, because it presses on the sensory pathways within her spinal cord. Why does somebody get a syrinx? She actually has a Chiari malformation if you look at her cerebellum on her MRI of her brain. And you can see where the cerebellum should end here and her cerebellar tonsils come all the way down here. If we actually measure that on her MRI, you can see that the cerebellar tonsils or the back part of the cerebellum hangs down about 19 millimeters. A normal measurement is under five millimeters. This is called a type one Chiari malformation, which by far is the most common type. I won't talk about the other three types, but know that they are congenital or you're born with them. Type one Chiari malformation actually occurs as the brain and the skull are growing. So it's usually diagnosed in late childhood or early adulthood. Okay, but what does this mean? The cerebellum is the back part of our brain and there's a portion of the cerebellum called the cerebellar tonsils that actually hang down and if they protrude below the foramen magnum, it can block the fluid flow. Our spinal fluid has a way of naturally circulating and bathing the brain. You can see where the fluid actually flows around the back part of our brain called the cerebellum and then flows down into the spinal cord. If the cerebellar tonsils are in the way, it'll actually block the flow of fluid and then the fluid will be forced to go through the central canal of the spinal cord. The natural flow of fluid around the spinal cord is to circulate around the cord and not through the cord. But in a Chiari malformation, that fluid is forced actually inside of the cord itself, causing the syrinx. In our patient's case, the fluid not flowing correctly is causing those chronic headaches. And then the syrinx is actually causing the numbness in the hands because now it's pressing on the spinal cord itself. So now let's talk about how we fix it. We first make an incision overlying the back part of the patient's brain. We then remove a small portion of the skull called a suboccipital craniotomy, as well as a laminectomy of the C1 vertebral body. That gives us the access we need to get to that portion of the brain. Once that's done, we then open the dura or the covering of the brain. We first remove the cerebellar tonsils that are hanging down and then do what's called a duraplasty. Basically, we sew a graft onto the back part to give it more room for fluid to flow. Then we close up. Seems pretty easy, right? We are operating right near the patient's brainstem. However, in a well-trained surgeon who is familiar with this operation, the results are excellent. Here is my patient's MRI six months after her Chiari decompression, which shows significant improvement in her syrinx. In addition to that, you see the huge amount of space where now there's plenty of fluid flow surrounding the back part of the cerebellum. Here's the before and after MRI where you can see interval improvement in the patient's syrinx as well as the decompression of that Chiari malformation. Most importantly, the patient noted complete resolution of her headaches as well as restored function in her hand sensation. Another example of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case.